Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose b is a real number, such that the absolute value of b is less than 1. Then, the limit as n approaches infinity of b to the power of n is equal to 0. Now, in proving this theorem, we have already proven if b is a real number such that 0 is less than b is less than 1, then the limit as n approaches infinity of b to the power of n is equal to 0. Right, so this theorem is essentially extending the proposition we have here so that b has the ability to be between negative 1 and 0 or also equal to 0. So now, let's get into proving this theorem. Well, one possibility is that b is equal to 0. And if b is equal to 0, then our sequence is just a constant sequence of zeros. So of course it converges to 0. So that case is trivial. So now let's suppose b is not equal to 0. Well, if b is not equal to 0, then the absolute value of b must be greater than 0. And by our assumption, absolute value of b is less than 1. But based on the fact that we already know, since 0 is less than absolute value of b is less than 1, we must have that this is true. What does this mean? By definition of the limit of a sequence, it means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer k such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of the absolute value of b to the n minus 0 is less than epsilon. Now, our goal is to prove the limit as n is approaches infinity of b to the power of n is equal to 0. And by definition of the limit of a sequence, this means the following. It means the same thing that we have above, it's just instead, absolute value of b to the power of n is replaced with b to the power of n. Now the whole goal is to prove this limit, which means we want to prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. The whole goal is to find some positive integer k such that this is true. Now, since we know that this limit is equal to zero, this means we know that this first statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon that we have here. So taking epsilon to be the epsilon we have here, we have that there is some positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, this is true. The whole goal has been to find a positive integer which makes this statement true. The claim is that this positive integer k will make this statement true. So taking k to be the k we have here, we proceed to prove this statement. Since we're trying to prove a statement about all positive integers greater than or equal to k, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. I'll call it n. From here, we want to prove that this inequality is true. So let me start by writing the left-hand side. We know that absolute value of b to the n minus 0 is equal to absolute value b to the n. But one of our properties of absolute value tells us we can pull the exponent n outside the absolute value. Since absolute value b is greater than 0, of course absolute value b to the power of n is greater than 0. So this guy is equal to the absolute value of itself. And of course, the inside absolute value b to the power of n is equal to absolute value b to the power of n minus 0. But wait a minute, we know that this statement is true for all positive integers greater than or equal to k. So in particular, it must be true for n. Therefore, this inequality is true. And so this guy is less than epsilon. So we have shown that absolute value b to the n minus 0 is less than epsilon, 
which is exactly what we wanted to show. So we have proven this statement. And that proves that the limit as n approaches infinity of b to the n is equal to zero. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.